Hey guys, today we're going to show you a clutch install on a Yamaha YXZ1000R. We have a transmission right here on the bench. We've already kind of gone through and loosened the stuff just to make it quick, but uh, first you want to pull the side cover off uh, beside the driver's seat, and then if you pull the skid plate underneath the training, it helps out too. Uh, once you get to that point, you'll get an 8 millimeter socket and you'll loosen up the clutch cover. This is the bolts around the clutch cover. You'll see there's three bolts on the bottom to have these copper washers and on the cover there's little arrows on those three so you need to make sure those copper washers match up with those three arrows that's important once you get the bolts all loose take it off there's two dowels there's one down here and there's one up here you want to just make sure you don't lose those or don't drop them you can pull them out right now if you want or you can just leave them in there just make sure you don't drop them in, inside the transmission once you get the clutch cover off uh, basically you have your pressure plate you'll just loosen these bolts right here We've already gone through and loosened them, so I'll just pull them out. It's going to be a little bit harder in the car. We're doing this on the bench just so you can see it really good for the video's sake. Okay, this is, uh, this is basically just a, a distribution washer that's held together by the bolts, and then you have your little pressure ring right here. This is, instead of the springs, this is how the factory applies pressure to the pressure plate and then the next step is the pressure plate. Pressure plate goes right on the, the friction disc so that plate pushes on here that's what gives you your pressure that's how it is stock so you can see over here this is a conversion kit made by Barnett it basically is going to get rid of this pressure plate and it's going to go to a spring setup so this is a more conventional it's got the six springs you can get different spring weights it uh, gives you more adjustment. You can have it a lot stiffer. That's the advantage to going with that plate. So today we're going to be installing that. One thing, we, one of the things we learned is it's kind of tough to get in there to switch out the clutch, and this clutch is pretty in depth. So what we did here is you'll once you get to this point, you'll pull out this push rod. It just pulls out. It's got an O-ring on it. Just make sure the O-ring's still in good shape. Set it aside, and then if you have a 30 millimeter socket with impact, you can loosen this nut. We've already loosened it, so I'll pull it off. Like I said, it's a 30 millimeter socket, so it's pretty big. Take that nut off. You'll need an impact or something to get in there. And then there's two washers behind the nut. You'll see on the washer it says, out. That one goes right at the nut, and then there's another flat washer behind it. So make sure you pull off two washers, put those aside. And then this makes it really easy once you get to this point. So pretty much once you get that nut and washers off, you can just grab this and just pull the whole clutch assembly out. Boom, you're there. There is a, shouldn't be anything behind right here. It should just be flat. Make sure there, because there is a space right here. That needs to stay in there. The basket stays, everything stays. This is all we need right here. So I'm going to put this training aside. So once you have it on the bench and you're going to replace it, pretty much like three quarters down, you can just pull them all off. Just like that. And then we'll just set them upside down. This is a brand new clutch we've already been messing with. We installed it. So we're going to put that one back on. But we'll set that aside. Now this is where it gets tough. Like if you're doing it in the car, this is where it would get tough. So that's why we do it on the bench. You can see this plate won't come off. So it's, it's stuck on there. If you look closely, there's a wire ring all the way around here, and there's a there's a couple clips right in here that hold it in there. So we're going to pop that out. We just have a couple of pick tools and a little pair of needleless pliers. Uh, sometimes it's easier to get from the inside and push it out. So we'll try that first. So basically, this wire is just holding a little bit of pressure on that steel plate. So while you're pulling it out around, just push around the plate. That wire will come off. And then this side we'll have to pull out also. So 
If you pull out on this side with a pick and you squeeze this side, I'll show you when I get it off how it looks inside there. It seems to be the easiest. There's just a hole and then this little wire goes through there. Alright, so all it is is just a little like a pinch of wire on the end, so it just sticks in there, that's it. So you just want to make sure it doesn't get caught in the hole. So we'll set that aside. All right, now we can go ahead and pull the steel. And then if you look, this friction plate is a lot skinnier. So it's got a bigger ID. And then it's got two washers behind it. You'll see it's a flat on the bottom. And then on the top, it's a bevel washer and it says outside. There's actually gonna be three of these, just like that. So another steel, another big friction with the bevel washers. I'm just gonna pull all of them off. Bubble washers, same thing, another steel, another big friction, and then these last bubble washers, so that's it. So when we go back together with it, you'll probably have a, a stock clutch or something you're going to replace. Uh, you, you can strip it all the way down, just, just basically the hub if you want. And then there's going to be a flat washer. These are just flat, doesn't matter which way it goes on. And then that bevel washer, it says outside, so that needs to go outside. Just like that, you know, do your friction. This will be the new clutch going on. You do your friction, do your steel, friction, another set of bevels. So you do a flat, and then your other bevel, same way the first one went on. Line them all up, another steel. Friction, flat, and bevel. So it's three exactly with the same with those. And then your last steel. Once you get to this one, this is why it's just so easy to do on the bench. Uh, we gotta put that wire ring back in. So this is the new clutch going back on. We've already switched out this bottom setup. We're at the point where we need to put this wire back on. So we see our holes right here. We'll pop this side in first. Okay, it's in the hole. And then uh, we're just gonna pull it around pushing down on the pressure plate on the steel plate letting it fall in the groove as we go around. Be a little gentle with it because it's just a little piece of wire. And at the end, we're just going to stick it back in the hole. Tuck it in. Now it's just important just to make sure it's in the, in the groove all the way around. You want that wire all the way in the groove, so we're just going to go back kind of by all of them, making sure they're all in the grooves. That looks good. Now we're back to where we started when we took it apart. So we have the three frictions, the three steels, all the bevel washers are in there, and the wire is in there. So at this point, uh, it'd probably be easiest just to, if you're working it back in the vehicle, you could just stick it back in, line up those three. So these grooves go, you can see these grooves go all the way down. This one only goes to right there, so you want to stick it in the long grooves. Just like that. Get it back on there. At this point we can put the, the two washers, just the flat one first. And then the one that says outside, one second. You could put a little bit of red Loctite on the threads and then put this nut back on there. And then you'll use your impact with your half inch socket and you'll, you'll tighten that back up. 
tighten it back up and then uh, once that's tight you can put your little push rod piece back on there. There is a ball behind here that pushes on this so you got to make sure that ball doesn't fall out. Let's see if it can fall out. No, it doesn't want to fall out so but there is a ball right behind here so make sure it stays in there. Now we're ready to finish the rest of the clutch. So these, the rest of these clutches are all the same. So we ended with a steel. We're going to go back to friction. And these clutches have been soaking, so we just stick them in a bag and put some oil in there, and they're all, all ready to go. So. It's just friction steel the whole way down. And then the last one you want to go in the other groove, so the last one will be the other channel. So it's clocked a little bit. And then from there, uh, we're going to go with the new pressure plate. So we've just kind of mocked this up, but I'll pull these springs out. You can see it's just a pressure plate with a bearing in there. Some things to think about is when you put this on is these little splines right here. You need to fit inside those splines, so when you put it on there, might not go right on. You have to kind of like rock it and then make sure it lines up. So it seems like this uh, the slave cylinder always has a little bit of pressure. So you, if you just hold it in like that and then you can go ahead and start your bolts. You can see these new springs are pretty, pretty stiff. So just get them all started just like that. Once they're all, uh, once you get them all started, then you want to run them down, torque them to about seven foot pounds. Uh, you can put your new gasket on at that time, uh, clean up the surfaces, put the new gasket on, put the cover on, and then that can go to seven foot pounds also. Make sure those copper washers we talked about earlier, make sure you leave those where the three arrows are. And then uh, change the oil if it was burned up or something. And then you should be good to go. If you guys have any questions, feel free to call us. Our website's welleracing.com. Thank you.